Cousins. Welcome back. Right, so... What did I miss? We all good to go? We are. You entered the observation room. The crew strapped to the chair. Was there standing before? Excellent. So we're all here. Yeah, Ice, Hojo. Oh, sorry. We're here. Well, I'm here. I feel, all right. feel like I feel like we were talking about something and just cut abruptly. We just we were guided by the admiral into this room. No, we were. And then okay. suddenly, and then suddenly, Saint left. Yes. Um, I'm back now. And now he disappeared into the wharf and then came back. Oslin points at the crew and says, for those of you who don't know, this is a crew. <laughs> a crew mercenary employed by the Tau in the uh, sector. From this one, as a crew sitting there struggling with its bonds, uh, clicking and chattering away as they do. Uh, We've learned that the Tau, in an effort to destabilize the region, after learning about the uh, Tyranid invasion, have paid a upstart war boss to raid an Imperial facility. So the Greenskins are working in cohesion with the Tau. That's uh, a new development. Well, the Tau, following their usual practices of Hiring outside mercenaries to do their dirty work. That's a whole lot of teeth. That's more Eldar. Uh, We're not sure what they promised them, but we uh, are not prepared to take the risk of either losing the planet because of the orc incursion or having the orcs become infected and spread the uh, gene stealer menace to other planets. Admiral, the orcs can come in. Of varying different sizes, especially these war bosses. Do we have any sightings on this orc war boss? Do we have any sort of scale and size and how many commands? Yes, uh, after uh, you may or may not have known about the Wall of Warlord Gurgut's Throttle Claw, which was taking place in one of the dead worlds in the sector. With his death, the wall broke up into smaller factions, and one of his knob lieutenants has taken off the large portion of the fleet. Well, not a insignificant portion. We don't have enough ships available in the area to take them on directly. And is it this knob or chasing or is it mm -hmm. or it's the knob itself okay we gotta kill him before the wall can actually solidify around him or he can do any more damage so he's not the biggest orc in the wall then no but we first noticed his ship because he seems to have strapped some pieces of uh razor gotta find my note as the Admiral quickly flips through a data slate. This ship... These are images of Tyranid Razor Fiend support ships in profile. And the orc is apparently looted or taken his trophies the brain casings from a few of these ships and strapped him to his rock 
the orcs are strapping tyranid. Well, taking trophies anyway. Originally, we thought it might be an infested rock that came out of the warp, which, as you can imagine, spreading the uh, gene stealer plague is the major concern in the sector. It's uh, pushed back our crusade on all three fronts. We originally came here to deal with the Tau. So we came to deal with the Tau. We're chasing, the an, orc. We're yeah. chasing an orc warlord. We're part of a wall. And did I hear you mention something about Tyranids? Are you not familiar with the uh, history of the sector? Not personally, no. This is far from out of our reach from, uh, from old Baal. All your problems are within the eyes of the watch, but not the specifics. I'm here to Please. do as ordered, Admiral. As I'm sure every every cousin with me is here to try and honor their chapter as best they can. Theros is starting to flick through the uh some small cogitator at the side. Just try to see if he can find some more information to educate himself as best he can. Well, while we don't have time to go over any complete history of the Jericho's Reach sector, upon coming through the Well of Night, the Crusade made original, its original push along the Orpheus salient with uh, great success until High Fleet Dagon arrived and pushed us back almost to the Iron Collar. Originally, when we came through, the biggest threat in the sector was the Tau, and the Imperium was planning on taking its revenge for the Democles Gulf debacle, which was also interrupted by Tyranids. But with the appearance of the Tyranids, the focus in the sector has been on repelling and stopping any more planets from being devoured. So I'm assuming this knob is heading towards the the hive. Or swarm. No. You, we are currently on our way to the Orthus, or planet Orthus, a mining planet, which is key to Imperial production in the area, along the end of the Canis salient in the Grey Hail front. Closest Tau controlled planet is Zircon, which is also under Tyranid incursion. But with their lack of warp technology, the Tau haven't really been able to push out and have only been ma managing to defend what they already control where they're not in considerable fleet size. So Admiral, can I ask what are we expected to come across in this mission? As in enemies? Well, our main goal is to reinforce the Imperial outpost on Ortha while the army there deals while the Imperial Guard deal with the Tyranids already present on the planet. The uh, Tau, apparently, which we've learned from the crew prisoner, paid the orcs to raid the area. In teeth and technology weapons, something orcs can never have enough of. I'm actually surprised the orcs are taking their technology. That doesn't sound very orky. Someone's orc bossy. That's it. Sounds more like trophy based. I cannot fathom the uses orcs would have for Tau technology. I imagine the damage that they're going to cause when they get to the planet, break the Imperial lines, and destroy the defenders' chances of resupplying and holding off the Tyranid. 
And that is reason for us to be here, no? Yeah, we need you, you to go mean? in, kill the war boss, destabilize his fleet, and then get out. Hopefully extract safely while the Tyranids finish off the orcs. Hopefully is a strong assumption, Admiral. Do you not have faith in us? I have faith in the Emperor. Yes, you should. So our primary objective is to take out the knob. Is there any other objectives? Secure the fortress. Make sure that it doesn't fall. The Imperial supplies of Prometheum alone there is critical. We're going to be sending two 150 man detachments of Penal Legion troops with you to help secure the area. You will be inserted by drop pod, and they will come down after the landing zone is secure. Excellent. Wonderful. After that, it's only a matter of drawing out the war boss somehow, or ensuring that he doesn't escape the planet. I assume we will remain in contact. Seems some sort of importance in that. There's comms equipment in the station itself. Other than your standard issued equipment, which admittedly the Admiral has no idea what is Death Watch standard issued equipment. It's like a 50 meter range box caster. The Inquisitor, while you're talking, stabs the crew through the throat, <laughs> killing it quickly as it bleeds out. Turns to you cleaning his uh, surgical equipment. Base is vitally important. The supplies, the planet is important. The Tau and their fiendish way have manipulated these orcs into carrying out their dirty work while they deal with their own problems. And where are the Tau? The Tau are to reiterate um, actually quite far away but this is the closest off of the tip of the great of the uh, salient to the Tau. I, let me look up the planet name again. I said it just five minutes ago. Zircon dealing with the Tyranids on their own. If you look at your sector map in D20, You guys are going here. The Tau are here. That's pretty nifty. The Admiral looks at his chronometer. We should be approaching the Imperial lines within the hour. And of the men you have assigned to us, who are they? I, let's see. The Munistorum and its uh, 
magnanimity has decided to supply you with Overseer Lucius Vernus and Kern. What do you know about them, Admiral? Kern is a good man. Lucius is a rat. <laughs> and what does the rat smell of? Residents. His supine ah. nature keeps him from the front. Ah. The fat one. Back. I was keeping up, sir. There's finding reasons to talk shit about those guys. Why so quiet? Um, because you said you were bay. Oh, yes. Jojo just asked about the uh, the overseers that were sent with you, and he asked the yeah, admiral what he thought of them. He said Lucius Vernus is a good man, but or no, he said Lucius Vernus is a rat, and Kern is a good man. And of course, a rat just finds a way to avoid the front line. Wonderful. And how, and how will we be hesitates? Busy? And how will we be uh, deploying? And will we we'll be, be deploying by drop pod? You have to. Your first objective is to secure the uh, the fortress in the surrounding area. And what of our company? After the ground, after you've secured the area and destroyed whatever uh, air defenses the orcs have set up in the area to uh, lock down the fortress. They'll be landing within the fortress on bulk landers. Well, at least we have a dead set objective in front of us. And how far away, or if at all, will we be deploying the drop pod from these anti air establishments? Um, you are going to be dropped just outside of their range, hopefully. So we'll see why we, we can We gotta get you cl as close as possible, and then you're gonna have to fight your way through the orc lines to get to the fort. I wouldn't say the orc fortifications are anything special, some trucks and looted anti-air defenses. They're not interested in staying on the planet. They're here to get the goods that Tau promised them. Some trucks, huh? Ah, uh -huh. A lot of trucks. Uh -huh. He swipes his finger on the, uh... Orders, you know, some Inquisitor swipes his finger a couple times on his data slate and informs you that the Magus Biologus has classified this orcoid as a member of the Cult of Speed. Admiral, you said our secondary objective was to disrupt the fleet. Uh, how big is this fleet? And how do we... And will we be expecting any turbulence before we're launched on this drop pod? When the war boss, who uh, we know is fond of looting is going down to the to the planet just by eliminating him you'll break any cohesion within the small orc free boot of fleet that is formed around him can't let him gain any more power but it should be enough to uh, scatter the ships in orbit with it through usual infighting so it's head hunting right down to the core yeah that's how we destroyed Throttle Claw's wall. Just 
respond to this aberration. Found a picture of the guard dropship. Imperial Guard high speed dropship. Thanks, fucking rat. What resistance do we do? We have any intel on these uh, anti air compounds? What resistance other than the air guns will there be? They're not compounds, they're trucks. They're trucks with anti-air batteries mounted on the back. <laughs> oh shit. Yep. That's the most... No, that's up there, but that's not the most orc thing you could have said. Anti-air guns with trucks taped to them? Get the t the model on tabletop. I'll shoot down at Thunderhawk. That's fucking great. Norg's devices may be ramshackle and crude, but they're always effective. I guess what I'm asking is, will they be, will the horde be thick enough that we won't be able to do a direct attack? Will we have to use any kind of stealth? Do you think, or mm, that's up to you. I. Would not suggest taking the orc cord on directly. At least now the Inquisitor support. says. I would suggest an insertion, setting up your defenses at the base when the orcs meet resistance. Standard orc procedure: the war boss will show up at some point to prove that he is the biggest and the baddest. This is a defense kind of mission, isn't it? Yep, you're going in. This this fortress cannot fall. Those the supplies in there are vital for help keeping the Tyranids at bay. And with this orc incursion, it's really hurting. The Imperial forces have already had to abandon basically that front, pulling back to far beyond the fortress. You are going to reclaim it, and then they're going to move up and reestablish their lines. It's a bit of a catch-22 scenario, cousins. I mean, we have to be quiet enough so we can take out the anti-air and bring down our penal uh, colonies, or penal uh, legions. Yeah, they'll be ferried down in drops. But at the same time, and we're also not advised to engage the orc horde directly. However, we'll have to engage the orc horde in order to pull out this, uh, this knob. Yeah, after Thanks. establishing your defenses, if you take them out beforehand. But, like I said, the density of this uh, work incursion might prevent a small team like yours from taking out the war boss directly. There's also the added fact that the bigger the biomass, the more likely the... Uh, possibility of Tyranids appearing are and ha so we are we are to defend this fortress Am I, is that correct yes and ensure that it doesn't fall how first far objective second objective kill the war boss how far away from the fortress is the anti-air or is the anti-air in the fortress just on trucks surrounding the fortress they have it under siege ah, I see oh we'll be cracking a siege now say we succeed in stopping these anti-air could we not man them ourselves we cannot or man orc tech Colin. the inquisitor uh, sneers the suggestion of using Xeno technology, especially crude orc technology. I have much experience with orcs in my history, and 
You can try all you wish, Radigast, but orc technology will not work for you, nor I. Just a suggestion. The asset is there. Why not use it? If we cannot, then... Oh, no, it, it simply will not work. That'd, Very be, that'd well. be as well a, a stick of, or lump of metal instead of an armament. The orcs are a curious kind. Ah. We will find another way. I'm not even sure we have anything capable of taking them out. But if we clear out the orcs around it, that's all we need to do. We'll tear Actually, them we'll tear them from their positions and render their vehicles immobile. Hilariously, your plasma rifle might be what we needed. I guess that's what Havel was hinting at. Right. We had nothing. We heard orcs and we thought hordes. Ah, all, if need be, all we need to do is tear open this. Uh, you should have core area and sat grenade. We all have nades. Yeah, but they have more trucks than we do nades. Chances are. Oh, well, that's yet to be seen. These orc free Buddhas are highly mobile. We'll tear it to pieces with our very hands if we have to. And once we take out them, I'm by the looks from the cogitator here. These uh. Imperial Guard dropships have armaments of their own. They'll thin the horde a little bit while we uh, reinforce the fortress itself. So we oh, to give you a point. Go ahead. As soon as possible, we're about to engage the. Uh edges of the fight in space with the Tyranids. If there's nothing else to discuss, then I suppose you should make ready. Very well. A little fun before the fun. In that case, Arvik stands and gives a a quick swish of his blade and prepares to leave. Radigas follows him behind, rushing up and nudging him a bit. Theros flicks a few more times to the cogitator and then carries on behind the two. We'll see you on our return, Admiral. And we will return. The uh, the fleet engage the Splendor fleet engaging in space that isn't as large as the one in this picture, but there is an idea of a Tyranid fleet. Those are their heavy um, cruisers, the ones with the three claws. There's only one of those in orbit. Luckily. <laughs> Those are the ones that it, uh, extrude the feeder tendrils after a planet's been secured. Is there a chance that these orcs have uh, gargants? It's possible, however unlikely. I suggest that if you see a gargant, do not engage it. Theros yeah. kind of walks around. Uh, Rod around Rod 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 definitely had access to gargants. So our vex kind of stopped. Uh, Theros kind of steps around him and carries on following. <laughs> I mean, ready go. Is envisioning you kind of stopping and turning around and talking to the admiral. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, we definitely we we know that Throttle Claw had access to gargants and other forms of junk titans. He works as commonly fueled. <laughs> you like that? Scrap Titans? They also call them Scrap Titans. 
<laughs> no, no. The sandwich junk, I like that. Alright, as you all head off and do your thing. The uh the fleet makes there the small the light cruiser and its two sword escorts make ready to break the lines. And uh while the Imperial fleet covers for their arrival. Trying to find a good picture for this, but... There we go. Oh my god, what the fuck? Oh my god. Picture load for you guys, minute attack. And we're yeah. I also tried to load up another picture, and I don't know if that one's coming. There it is. Alright, that's the scale. You guys are on a Dauntless class. Two light cruiser equipped with torpedoes in the front, which is the third up from the bottom, with two sword escorts. If you were to look at an Auspex, the ship in the center of the screen is a full-blown battleship, which is equivalent to the large Retributor class, or Retribution class ship engaged, it's a flagship engaged in the fleet action. Chariot will be strong and sturdy. Oh. So, not as big as I would have liked heading in, knowing what we're heading into. The light cruiser is designed for speed and is perfect for an insertion like this. Especially, potentially chasing down an orc speed freak in space. So, once we were dropped to the surface, I'm assuming these, uh, Escorts, if you will, will be leaving us and heading back into a safe di distance. Yeah, they'll be supplementing the uh, the screening force around the planet. And they'll be withdrawing. They, they can't hold the skies over the planet. The uh, the full blown Tyranid Splinter Fleet, but they'll do what they can. Maintaining full observation or orbital support of the planet is not 
possible, but not impossible to uh, sequester if they manage to break the line, depending on how the, the fight in space goes. As the ship makes its approach and the sounds of detonation and rumbling outside and the general chatter and clamor of alarms on the ship, you are told to make ready and get to the drop pods in the bay, launch bay. Oh, that does not sound good. Sounds like it's time, cousins. We best make haste. You'll launch, the ship will wheel out and wheel back in to launch the guard after you secured the uh, the landing zone. You have about five hours before the ship needs to pull off, so you need to take out those AA guns immediately. First, uh, accesses the, the door servitor and heads into the drop pod, strapping himself in quickly. He's not a big fan of drop pod, but he's used them many times before. It's just a different form of flying, cousin. It's something you should be familiar with. I'm also familiar with it. Then why the discomfort? Or maybe this is for another time. Come on, Vec. We must go. I'll have a cop sign into the drop pod as well. Readying his blade. Loading his gun, Radagast follows suit. Strapping it onto his maglocks on this suit. As soon as you're mag locked in and the machine spirits read all clear, a tech servitor unceremoniously hits the launch button. Wonderful. And you are shot out of the ship. With the turbulence hitting, so the Cyrus sort of leans his head back. They're not built for soundproofing. Your helmet's auto dampen. Anything coming through, if you were to have your helmet off, you wouldn't be able to hear yourself think. This will be the second time we've engaged the enemy like this, cousin. Last time it went fine. Let's hope this time it goes quite as smoothly. Last time. The last, the last mission we done, we dropped in, in the same light. Yeah, converted the hell out of everyone on the landing pad. That was a good time. I guess we should roll for initiation. Initiative, excuse me, what the fuck is wrong with me? Well, we don't know if we're in combat when we land. Are you kidding me? Uh, yeah, Hojo, roll me a D100. Oh, hell. We could have landed on one of the trucks and destroyed it. Thank you. I rolled the 50. You rolled the 50. Mm hmm. We would have been shot at the air by the truck. Oh, yeah. I mean, maybe not. Forks aren't the most accurate. They really aren't. It doesn't sound like they're willing to expend too much. If they're all, if we're all they're willing to send, they may as well make sure we land. Well, that is, given that this thing holds together. It is not up to us, brother. Not anymore. You guys land safely where you're supposed to. What? All right. 
Wait, hold if, on. If you would land, if you had rolled a one or a one hundred, you would have landed on something, and it would have been good or bad. Oh. Oh. So then we have five hours of surveillance right now. So they know that we have landed safely. Oh yeah, there's there's no way that some orcs didn't notice you coming down. But you didn't land in the middle of the horde. As the doors sort of bust open, Theros comes out. Uh, plasma gun in hand. Scanning around the general area with using the uh, sight, the thermal sight. Landed roughly um, 10 kilometers behind the back line. You can hear the thunder of orc guns and fighting going on. Do we have any visual? We might have to roll for them because of the uh, Imperial assets. Yeah, roll for Ah, oh, fuck. I'm actually not sure what I should be rolling. Let me find it again. <laughs> it's a perception test with a perception of 50. And we do not have to be told if it succeeded or failed. I have the information uh, can be wrong. My prey sense sight um, gives me a plus twenty bonus to vision based perception test. Oh, sorry, as, no, sorry, that's just at night. That's just at night. I can tell you that as a GM, I prefer to decide. Like, so if if you if you succeed, you succeed, and if you do well, I'll tell you what you see. If you don't, I'll make shit up. I will not tell you whether it's right or not. Okay, that's good. Yep. Especially here, since they are kind of busy. They wouldn't know if it's right or wrong. As a player in D&D, someone once handed me a letter and a map that contained the mission to my barbarian who could not read, and I pretended that I knew what was going on and fucked the mission. <laughs> no one bothered to ask <laughs> if my character could read. I, didn't, I wasn't going to do something my character couldn't do, you know? And I'm do the same kinds of things as a GM. Nothing malicious, but I will act accordingly. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but that's funny. I like that. So I rolled a 55. Alright. Is Ice gonna roll? Did Ice roll? Oh, we're all doing it? What? Well, Need uh, Hojo to roll as well. He rolled a 50. I'm that, gonna depend. No, that, that's for something else. That was the drop. Oh. I got a 64. I was gonna rely on the orbital surveillance, which has the perception of 50. You can definitely you can you can hear the thunder of the guns off in the distance. You know, you landed roughly around where you were supposed to. The landscape is kind of bleak and rocky having been uh, stripped out you're on a mining road basically heading to this fortress which is basically a glorified supply depot well you landed in a field next to a mining road but I digress anyway you can see what appears to be orc flyers in the distance <laughs> how many do we two. see it? two have two okay yep we know that um, this orc's uh, warband of mercenaries is well equipped, if not very large, but large enough to basically be a problem. You know that their fleet can't be engaged directly. They have two. They have three heavy cruisers at their disposal, which is a lot of firepower for a small WA. I have uh, two questions. Mm -hmm. uh, do we see any uh, sort of cover in the direction of the the gunfire? Like any trees or um, general sort of rubbly type or whatever in the direction? 
between us and the gunfire. Other than like piles of scree and rock formations and things like that, not really. No trees or anything. Right? No, there's just scrub vegetation in this area. Second question is: Is there any high ground? Any kind of slight hill, even slight hills, or anything that might give us a better vantage point um, to try and get an, an eye on these on ear guns? Towards the gunfire. There's an idea about the landscape. That's what you're looking at. Basically, you got to make your way f through some steep hills and mountains. I mean, yes, you, there are, there's high ground around. It's um, not practical for vehicles to travel up, but a group of Astartes should have no problem. And these flyers, these orc flyers that we saw, are they um, directly towards the gunfire? Are they in combat themselves, or are they off to the side doing something else or scouting? Yeah, they, they seem to be wheeling in and out around the, the combat. They're definitely in on something. Um, roll a knowledge check as on Xenos. Wait, oh, you'd have proficiency on that you have hatred orcs, wouldn't you? Uh, let's see. I don't know what the actual hatred orcs does. Uh, that's what I was asking earlier on, but my... What, what, I was going to say because you're you a say? veteran of Armageddon that yes, you do have advanced knowledge on orcs. Okay, yeah, makes sense. So what do I roll? Um, should be Xeno. I forget what that's under. It's on your sheet. I think it's based off of intelligence. It's a uh, skill test. I'm trying to see if I can find it, but I can't. I speak oh. language. Uh... Sure, is that forbidden lore, forbidden lore Xenos? Xenos? I've got it to trained. So you, we, I have it to train standard. So will I get a plus ten percent on that since I've got? Well, since I'm yes, I'll, g I'll give you a plus ten percent. You're a veteran of the Armageddon War. You would have seen pretty much everything the orcs could throw at a legion or a company. Oh, the, the I didn't do that. It doesn't. Kill him and pay no attention. It doesn't matter. I rolled a fourteen. That's good. You rolled low. You, you have to roll under. Oh, okay. Right. I thought I had to roll. You rolled a 14 on a d100 against your intelligence and your lower is better. Okay, yeah, of course. Yeah. Right, Hojo? Exactly. Am I doing yeah. that right? Yeah, you're doing that right. Yeah. So, so my you, intelligence you, is 42. And I so you had 3 degrees of success. Yeah, okay. It's been you a know while that, since we last played. <laughs> yeah. So you can tell that those are orc fight Obamas. Cousins, we need to be wary of those flyers I have. Hey, let Perhaps me get you a picture. Perhaps we should conceal ourselves. There doesn't seem to be much for concealment ahead. Either we get to some high ground and see if we can get advantage on these anti-air, um, or we'll want to take those out before we do much else. However, anti-air guns may be able to take shots at us ourselves. There's nothing to stop Arc Arc Tech doing that. Orc fight bombers are notoriously inaccurate, but the ordinance that they can drop is significant, however limited. They'll definitely be resupplying somewhere. Like the depot? They're quite large, aren't they? Fight bombers? They're they're like one orc and a couple of Gretchen. Okay, so run around. Like... I just posted a picture. That's a that's a one man cockpit. And with one my orc. knowledge on on these on this uh, on the orcs. Do I know of any weak weak spot on the on these particular vehicles? You don't have to worry about them yet. If you, uh, I'll give you this one. If you wanted to use your psychic ability to try to get an idea, like you did against the uh, the robots, or not the robot, the um. Yeah, I remember the, uh, the dreadnought servitor thing. Yeah. Battle suit. Um. Yeah, well, I mean, how far away are they roughly, did you say? Um, you're 10 kilometers behind the front, behind their back line, so they're probably 20 or 30 kilometers off. You just see them as uh, small planes. Okay. You just caught the profile, right? You had three degrees of success, so 
You can tell by the engine noise. Yeah, I mean, you can spot, you can you can tell uh, craft even in, on Earth from quite a distance. So yeah, and I've got fucking space marine helmet. <laughs> Yep. But yeah, I'm not going to do any turret on it just now. Hopefully we won't have to deal with them quite at the moment. Um, uh, if only I had some kind of mind control, we could force one of the, the anti-air guns to fire on them. Other than that, um, we may have to rely on pulling them down to us and using Arvac to jump up and see if we can take them out from the sky. We'll see. Right, hopefully, yeah. hopefully it won't come to this, cousin. I didn't think about just mind controlling one of the fighters and having them just crash. I don't have mind control. I'm I know, that. but you brought it up. Yeah. Well, it's, uh, I advise we keep low and head towards some high ground. See if we can get advantage heading towards the uh, the enemy line. What say you, cousins? Yeah, maybe a concealment test would be something we should think about. All right, make um, a concealment test. It's All an three agility of you. test. Agility test. Mhm. Mm it's an opposed one too, so Avil can just roll low and fuck us anyway. Well, are we gonna be? Don't you have to? Don't you only have to roll that if you've been seen by something? Um. Uh, well, I'm going to take into consideration that the orcs are also looking for ah, things to fight. So being orcs. Well, my agility is sixty, and I rolled a forty-four. Does this count power on the Yeah, it takes any, if you have any bonuses to your agility, take that into consideration. Alright, well, I passed it. I got 32. Alright. What bonuses did you get? I get plus 10 from the power armor I have. I have like Walmart Mark 6. Oh. Yeah, the Corvus. Yeah, it gives agility, plus 10 agility, plus 10 strength instead of plus 20 strength. It's bad that I know I remembered that. <laughs> And when you said you get your bonus, I was like, that's from his power armor. I remember that. Yeah, I get a bonus from power armor history, fury like lightning. Make your Let's roll up. Just, just roll a d100 oh. and calculate off of it. Alright. Forty-nine. What's your agility? Uh, it's 43. Chances are I'm fucked. What's your power armor history bonus? Trying to figure it out. Plus 5 to agility. I failed. By 1. By 1. So basically, I'm a loud fuck, but did they notice that? As will they notice that, I guess. Atheros is trying to move as swiftly and as quietly as he can in power armor. Keeping slightly hunched over. He's still, he's holding, he's uh, wielding plasma gun at the moment. Alright, can you guys also make an endurance roll for me, all three of you? Right. That's based off of because you're pretty far away, so I'm gonna see how f how quickly you get up to the lines. What is that based off of? Um, let me look at the character sheet real quick. Strength or toughness, but I can't remember. I it's toughness, I believe. Okay, that one's a little bit easier. Uh, I've, I've got 43 toughness, and I rolled a 46. I have 50, and I rolled a 72. I have 53, and I rolled a 7. Alright, as you're making your way up the uh, first couple of hills, some screw knocks loose underneath your heavy foot, foot treads, and you go tumbling down, knocking Avarice, or Avarick? Arvec. Oh, God damn it. Wait, I've uh, only played like five games with you. Uh, take Arvec out with you as you fall. 
damn. That is like I, I just rolled three under. Okay, let's roll. Um I'm not gonna actually roll. But Stay you're fine. Okay. It's like like you tumbled back a little bit, but that was enough to just fucking throw Arvek off his feet. Oh, I felt stealthy, so it's just <laughs> Can I do yeah, a reaction? No in, can I do a yeah. reaction and try and grab him? Uh, sure. Would I roll? I can just use my jump pack to stabilize myself. No. Wouldn't that attract attention? That that'd be a little bit noisy. Yeah, I'm just gonna grab from. <laughs> oh yeah. What what do I roll on? <laughs> Remember where? Uh, let's do an agility test to see if you reacted quickly enough. Oh yeah, I got an agility of sixteen and I rolled a four. Yeah, you slam. You, you freaking. Save yeah, yep. Save the day. I sort of jolt around and grab his wrist, sort of hauling him down towards the slope. Yep. So... Radagast goes tumbling back, knocking Arvac over, but Saint manages to uh, whip around wait a minute. and grab. Why do I fall back? Oh wait, no, you rolled a 7, didn't you? You passed. Uh, yeah. yeah, it was me that... I, I used to yep. slip back because I rolled 3 over and then knocked him down. Yeah, okay. So, you fall backwards and knock him down. <laughs> yeah. And then you grab managed him. to grab him and stabilize yourself. Save your life. <laughs> you continue on, you're, you're getting closer. You can you can see some of the, uh, the dust kicked up from the explosions and the return fire coming from the fort. And do we see any kind of anti-air guns firing towards the skies? Any any sort of trace of any any sort of flashes skyward at all? Yeah, there are friendly anti-air guns coming on. They're keeping the fighter bombers at bay. But there's a... If they manage to take those out, the fort will easily be overrun when the air orcs gain air superiority. And do I, do we see any anything that may look a bit more like orc anti-air? Keep your eyes peeled, we need to find this anti here. You can hear a lot of gunfire, you can't really distinguish it at this point. Yeah, you can yeah, tell yeah. where the orc big guns are. Did I call the Admiral to do a... an Auspex scan from space? You can do that, he is holding close enough. Alright. I guess it's the same rolls as before. Roll for perception. With a uh, perception of 50. Um, call it in, and I will roll for the ad roll. Right. Better. Hold on. Because I don't remember his fucking name. <laughs> Posted it. Yeah. I know. Admiral Kurgan. We require your aid. Give us a scan of the local environment. We need... We need details of structures. The Vox operator aboard the ship gives you a confirmation and relays your message to the Admiral. Yeah, that's good. Tharos keeps low, he's down on one knee, sort of trying to survey the area as best he can, keeping an eye on those bombers. The garbled okay. transmission comes back. A little while later, uh, apparently there's a lot of fighting going on in space, and they were not able to do a sustained scan of the area, but it was good enough to uh, send you some general information in the direction that you know the big guns are. You can clearly see some trucks set up around them, and there are at least two of your targets doing overwatch for the orc artillery. And vehicles. Two of our targets. The uh, the anti-air guns. And right. where, where are they in relation to those fighter bombers? Um, the fighter bombers are kind of overhead. They've got they're doing like a. You're definitely. Well. 
the photobombers are doing like a wide holding pattern around the fortress, just kind of scouring the area, waiting for opportunities to go in and take out the opposing anti-air. You don't know how long this fight's been going on, but it looks like the orcs are unwilling to approach the fort. Especially while guns are still trading shots. The artillery. However, also knowing orcs, you know that this won't last for long, and that they're going to get antsy and do a push to breach the walls at some point. Aye. From a knowledge of these fighter bombers, do they have any anti-air anti -air capabilities themselves? Fighter bombers have a... Um, you know that they have they a have heavy mounted shooters, gun. They? Yeah, they have heavy shooters all over the place. Uh, so we might want to take care of them before we uh, call in our, our support anyway. Okay. Um, they're not. They're not air-to-air -air vehicles, though. Yeah, yeah, I know. I was just wondering what their capability was, but they got big shooters everywhere then. No, they're they're just harassment guns at this point. A heavy yeah. shooter is nothing to a vehicle. Okay. Kind of like our bolsters are not much. They specialize in dive bombing ground targets. Yeah. Okay. Limited anti, like so air. They air could, so they could really kill us if they wanted to. They could kill you. So I'm. Um, I would recommend we head over towards those two targets. Our thing are past pretty clear ahead. Until we get closer and get a, a better um, eye on the situation over there. We're not really sure how to approach. The Emperor's work needs doing. And that's now as good as time as any. We do another concealment test? Um, if you want to, yes. Do I need to take another one since I passed the other one? Do you? Uh, yes. I rolled a 62, so... I am a little bit loud. I am in the open. <laughs> I'm oh, in the open crap. as well. Stop shouting at the enemy, brother! <laughs> Fucking... Oh, no. Just begin oh, shouting in Orcish, trying to blend in. Fucking green marine. <laughs> I am green. You'll never know. Oh wait, no, never mind. Death watch. You're more black. You can hear the unmistakable noise of orcs talking. Now we roll for initiative. Let me just uh, pull this up. How close to these talking or uh within 20 meters they they're definitely searching for something they know they heard something and is there any cloud cover between us <laughs> so it's, it's an orc patrol is there any cover between other, us and them? other than the rocky outcroppings of the kill you so loudly disturbed <laughs> so this there is heavy cover around in terms of boulders and things like that. And do we do we have any kind of bearing on how many there are at this point, or are we still unsure? You're unsure. The orcs are getting closer and they sound excited, as excited as orcs can, with gunfire and slabbing. We don't have a banner on, so let's... Down, brother. Fuck keep, it. keep low. <laughs> keep space. Get ready to charge if we have to. Oh yeah. I'm ready. I'm with you, brother. So as you guys are crouching behind these boulders, trying to get out of sight of the general direction that these orcs are coming from, you see a group of three boys walk around the corner. As They're obviously like, looking for something. Of our corner, because I'm like, how close? Like, come walking around the, uh, they come walking the hilltop that you're on, right? With all the steep sides and crenellations and boulders and everything as they come up 
the hill and appear over the lip, I should have said. So how far away? They are about 20 meters away. We should strike first, and wait for the others. I would say we wait until they get closer. Cause I say, Come on, let's roll concealment. Oh, I'm gonna roll concealment. Remember, you're standing still, so you get a plus 10. I roll 8. I'm keeping low. Down, cousins. <laughs> no! <laughs> we fight! Can Maybe I... it's best to wait and ambush them. I don't think there's an option at this point. Radagast rolled a 96. Radagast stands up. Both are at the ready. Theros moves low and closer to them with his concealment roll. As far as he possibly can move. No, and... me orcs! I have no weakness! And I rolled, I, I rolled an 8 on my concealment roll, and I'm keeping low and moving directly towards them, just slightly off to the side. What did you guys, what, what did everyone else roll? I got a 14, but I'm gonna stand up with uh, Radagast and rev my chainsword. Alright, two of the orcs are not paying attention as one has just slapped the other one on the back of the head <laughs> and screamed at him in orcish, but one of the boys immediately looks up and bellows something in their guttural speak it sounds a lot like marines start shooting <laughs> the other two orcs immediately turn to face you roll initiative <laughs> oh shit i don't remember what initiative it's a d100 isn't it no, it's a D10 plus your agility and not any other bonuses you may have. Yep. Right. Does that factor in power armor? Yes. It's, mm. it's if your power armor, if um, reflexes are like lightning, that specifically has to do with initiative, there is a stat on there. He's uh, he's got that Mark Six. That should boost his uh. What the hell is it? It's agility by 10. There you go. Yeah, because that'll give me two points, because I got um, lightning reflexes. So that doubles my agility bonus. On can, can I just say that you guys are really, really lucky that my character is not there while you're trying to be stealthy? Because there's no way my character can be stealthy. Are we, rolling, are we rolling initiative? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's an agility, isn't it? Yes, Mark? your agility bonus, d10 plus your agility bonus. And if your armor has agility bonus stats, add those in. Oh shit, D10. I've rolled a D100. So. Okay, I rolled a 5, and my agility bonus is now 6 after my upgrades. So I rolled an 11. Okay. Agility bonus of 4, plus. What the fuck is it? Paranoia, I, plus I, 2. How did you get 20 on your agility roll? I have lightning reflexes, so that doubles my agility bonus, and that's yeah. like 50 agility. Fuck so that's... Man. And then I have chapter trappings that can be plus two. Nice. And I would make... There we go. That's 13. If you're gonna be a jump assault, you might as well get to jump in first. You might as well be fast, huh? It makes sense. You should think about getting that one item that gives you uh, a natural speed and agility for a couple of minutes, ten minutes at a time. All right, Arvik gets to go first. Well, I just just say I'm uh, since I got crazy concealment, I moved towards them as fast as I could, um, while still try to be concealed. What distance would I have moved? Uh, half. Charge full, uh, sorry, half full charger run. I'd say something like his first attack should be a surprise attack and therefore get bonuses to it. No, I'm just trying to find out how close I got to them. Because I, when you guys stood up, I keep kept crouched since I got a good conceal roll and moved towards them as fast as I could while crouching. 
Yeah, if I'm they're sorry. 20 meters away, I'll say you're now 10 because Space Marines are fast. Okay, that's uh, under my full, but I, I'm crouching, so that makes sense. So I'm going first. Then. What's the initiative yeah. of the orcs? You don't need to know. So I didn't. I, I didn't. Uh, I, I moved before we rolled initiative. That was like as they stood up and did their thing. So I'm technically starting at ten meters away from them. Those are the orcs' initiatives. How far? Oh, they're is separate. Huh? Yeah. Twenty meters away. I was gonna ask, how far can I charge with my jump pack? I think you can go like 50 meters of that, can't you? It's a twice as agility bonus. Oh, okay. Ah, so that's. No, not yeah. as agility bonus, twice as movement. Ah, oh, shit. Excuse me. What's so a full movement? My... Uh, mine's eight. What's your agility bonus? Uh, four. Without armor. What is it with armor? Five. There you go, it's just about 20. Yep. Oh, okay. Then I shall jump at the nearest one. And uh, make a charge attack, I guess. Alright, so you jump at the one on the far left. Should do the weapon skill in. Yep. And whatever bonuses the jump pack gives you. Gives me any bonuses. It doesn't matter. I pass anyways. What what did you use? For I use weapon skill. Okay. No. What what was your your attack? Can I use? Since this is a charge, right? So I can't use lightning strike on a charge. So no. Not yet. At least. You used your chain sword. Yeah. I just, oh yeah. Sorry. I used my chain sword. Right. And that passes your weapon skill? Yeah. I got a 56 and I have a 60 base. So. Alright, so there's no it, there's no degree of success, you just hit. Yeah. Alright. And... Let me look. Okay, roll for your damage. Oh, and um... He also has a Promethean Blessing, so the orc that he hit has to take an agility test or catch on fire. I have Earl 9, so I got 12 damage. And yeah, Wait, I, what? Take... I got a 9, and then the chainsword is. What is it? 1d10 to stay here? Don't forget to add twice your strength bonus. Oh, yeah, fuck. Twice, really? Yeah, because you have a natural strength. Oh yeah. So that'll be twenty-two. Hi. Because that good old bionic arm give me plus ten when I use that weapon, or use that arm with weapon in it. I gotta make a couple of rolls for the orc boy. Oh, the orc boy's woos, whoops of uh, joy 
at the prospect of fighting quickly turn into terror as your chainsword cuts across his chest, lighting him on fire. He drops his gun, falling back. Whoop, I'm on fire! <laughs> He's trying to put himself out. <laughs> How many wounds do these guys have, anyway? I can't wait to get involved in this scrub. How many orcs did you say there was here? There's, there's two more orcs left. This was just a small patrol. Oh, they have 15 wounds. Okay. Oh, they're gonna get wrecked. Yeah, I'm just I'm just gauging how well you guys are going to be able to trash orcs with this fight. Okay. Plus, you were really loud, so I'm slowing you down. Right. Because someone had to go fall down a mountaintop. I rolled okay. three over my joy. <laughs> that equates to falling well beyond over your head to a well orchestrated flip into your brother. So it's uh, your neck. Oh, is that, is that uh, Isis or Radigast's? No, Arvax. Turn over. Uh, yes. Could I use a tactical advance to move forward and also take cover? Or is there no cover here? Um, there is some cover. Some cover off to your right a little bit. The not including the boulders that you're leaving. Alright, then I'll do that. And use hip shooting to make a free attack while I move into cover. What kind okay. of cover is it? Nah, it's heavy cover. Oh god, okay. Think of a, a boulder bigger than you. <laughs> we fucking surrounded by boulders? Pretty much. Boulders lose scree. Now let me see how far I move. Yeah, it's a full move. So it's 8 meters. And I rolled an 80. <laughs> oh, good lord. Against a 57. No go. I missed. Just standard rounds. Alright. Your rounds detonate around the orcs as you move into cover. Ending pieces of sharp rock flying everywhere. The orcs don't seem to notice as they start to lay on some heavy fire there. How many attacks did you get in the charge with a melee weapon? I get just three. the one. Yeah, you get one. Unless you have like some really late like, game talent. You just the one at what was the end of that? You can get more if you have like there's just one late game talent that lets you use like lightning strike on the charge, but that's like rank seven or something like that. Oh, okay. On damage free. And this orc sucks at shooting. He misses you as you move to cover. He just opens up. Trying to, what you assume, he's just trying to dump his clip as fast as possible. <laughs> dump. Moving his gun around over his head and waving it in your general direction. Wonderful. Is now Saint's turn. Okay, um. Well, I'm gonna. I'm gonna charge at them. 
but I get a a non-aggressive action and uh, an attack, don't I? Yes. Um. So as I'm charging at them, I'm going to use short range telepathy and just fucking scream into their brains to try and confuse and fear them. Wait, so you're charging or you're moving? I'm charging. I charge of 18, and uh, I should be 10 away from them after after getting close. Yep, so you're right, you're right up on their face. Yeah. So as I'm charging, I'll use short range telepathy as my other, other uh, action, because I don't know what else to do. Alright. So I roll uh, on my, I think it's willpower if I remember correctly. I rolled a 34, and my willpower is 45? No, uh, my willpower is 50. So I'm All right. so I, I, I scream as I charge both in their heads and out loud. Crying for sanguine and uh, charging. I have my chapter trapping is Wings of Wrath, which is what plus one damage on charge. But we'll see if I hit first, because with my four sword, um, as I draw it, if it does uh, make contact, I can I do have the chance to add extra D10s worth of damage. I run towards the closest orc, drawing my sword, and lunge up, swinging overhead down towards his throat. My weapon skill is uh, 60, and I rolled a 12 of a d100. Alright. So as you're charging, charging the orcs using your psychic scream, um, the orc that you're closest to just stops, slack jawed, and stares at you because he completely failed his test. <laughs> Excellent. And the gun even falls from his hands. <laughs> he's just—he's horrified. The orc that's on fire couldn't give a fuck. <laughs> 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 he's too busy trying to put himself out. The other orc didn't notice because he's too busy firing his gun. As you run at this orc who's slack jawed and horrified and rooted in place by fear of your of the emperor that you've instilled in him, you take your sword and you swing at him. Can you and you rolled a twelve, right? Yeah, of a D100. Yep, and you rolled damage. I have not rolled damage yet. I, it's a 1D10 plus 6 and pen 6. Right. I rolled a 3, so plus 6. Uh, it's a 9 with a pen 9. Uh, um, roll the wound again. I also, when do I bring my strength into it? Because I've also got plus 10 strength with my power armor history. You would have added. You would add your str that plus ten strength to your strength, and then taken that new strength bonus. So, say you have a strength of forty, and your strength bonus is four. Then you add the ten. You got fifty. Your strength bonus is five. Okay. So, do I do that with that hit? Yeah, you would. You would have already added that to your strength bonus. Just do that now. Okay. So my uh, strength bonus is uh, four. So it's three plus four, um, and then plus ten for my armor history. All right, and now would be a time to know what war hatred gets you. So it's a uh, seventeen total so far. All right. Hatred is a plus ten bonus to attack hated creatures. That's during the roll. And then I also get plus one damage on charge from my chapter trapping. So, so that 12 turns into a two. Oh. And what's your weapon skill again? And my weapon skill is 60. So that's five um, degrees of success. And then my damage is uh, three plus four strength bonus plus 10, which gives me 17, plus one from uh, my Wings of Wrath trapping. And if I do damage to him, um, I get to roll a, will a opposed willpower test as a free action, and my degrees of success if I um, dictate the number of extra 1d10s I get damage. And what weapon are you using again? Force sword. 
four sword as you ah, okay as your psychically charged blade comes down at his collarbone where it would be you assume on an orc his head explodes when it comes in contact with the psychic field from your blade resonating with your screen that you already unleashed the orc is head just blood mist as you clean it, cleave him in two do you remember me greenskins brother he is dead Calm down. I didn't even get to roll my extra damages. <laughs> Fucking dead, man. What do you want to do? Blow up the rest of his body? Okay, yeah, my, my blades cleave directly right into his torso. I just sort of boot the body off the edge of my blade, uh, swinging it down to leave a spray of blood ready to charge at the next orc uh, in my next turn, I guess. Uh, the orc that's on fire screams leg it, while the uh, the other orc just can't be fucked to move. He's still screaming his battle cry. <laughs> so uh, none of these dog uh, orcs are going to attack us. The one that's on fire is trying to is trying to run away, and, and uh, he's going now. So Arvik, it's an attack of opportunity because he's just trying to get the hell out. Should I roll that one? Yeah, just take that. Melee? Yep. Do not let him meet up with the rest of the greenskin. I pass that. We want to stop that one that's running away. Alright, roll damage. You, uh. You know they can hear chainsword up to 100 meters, right? But we have a chance to move out of the way. I guess. But we can't let the other one get back. If we create too much of a ruck, too much of a ruckus, those dive bombers will be heading straight out. Do not think for a moment, cousin, that they will not respond to space marines from the from the emperor. Yeah, I got himself. a twenty. I think it is. Yeah, I got twenty. So as the screaming and flailing burning orc turns around to try to run off, your chainsword catches in the back, laying open his spine, and he falls to the ground, bleeding out and dying. Does he catch a light? Yeah, he's on fire now. He's been on fire since the start when he originally got him. Alright. But that last work, he's tough as nails. He's dead hard. Well, he's running away. He's running uh. away, right? No, he's the one that doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> he's just shooting in the air. Wait, didn't you say he's one was? At me, man. Didn't you say one was running away? That's the yeah, one that's the one he just killed. The guy on fire. Oh, the guy on just... fire was running away. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah he okay. finally failed the test. So we have one orc that's going to be attacking. So do I get my turn then? Or? Well, the orc hasn't had his turn yet. Yeah, the orc hasn't had his turn. Oh. oh my god. You triple crit? Let me know, man. Now hold on, I gotta figure this out. How this is gonna work? Fucking roll is absurd. Remember, you can use roll twenty. Yeah, but then you can see my rolls. Is that not a good thing? No. He doesn't like it. So the last orc boy, realizing that he's going to die, and still just completely reveling in the idea of combat, um, turns to Arvek, swinging his gun like a club, 
as the gun makes contact with Arvac, the barrel comes completely off. It just breaks, and the gun falls apart in the orc's hands, doing no damage. I don't know what to say about that. Can I headbutt the orc? <laughs> um, yeah, it's your turn again, so if that's what you want to do. If you want to describe it, go for it. Is the is the orc like kind of like confused that his gun broke, or is he just kind of? Nah, he's just bellowing. This spit covering the back of your armor. Ah, well. Bits Wait, so my, is he behind me, or? Yeah, he, so you cut that orc down, right? Oh, yeah. You were facing the way the orc. He was next to you. He turned around, screaming, swung his gun like a club, and exploded on on the back of your head and palindromes, just completely shattering the gun. Arvik turns and grabs the orc by like the neck and shoulder, slams his head into Arvik's head as he brings it down. All right, so roll a strength and then um, a weapon skill. Like a strength test? Yep. Could be using his head as an improvised weapon. Yep. Yeah, I got That's 40. Is that against my strength then? Alright, so what's your strength? It is... 50. Or no, it's 40, sorry. Alright, let's say you pass, because of your, your strength bonus. Subtract that from your D100 roll. And then I got an 11 on the weapon skill. Isn't a um, a primitive weapon just a D10 plus your strength skill? I believe so. so if, if, you... it is, if it is against advanced armor, it is cut in half. Or anything else that is not primitive. Yeah, it's primitive armor. You good to go then. Yep, roll a D10. Plus my... Plus, plus your strength. Is it strength or is it strength? Times two or just strength? Just strength. With your arm or phone and all that. Yeah, 14. Alright. As you, uh, you pick this, the boy up by his war harness and head bottom, you bust his teeth out of his mouth. And he's blood trickling down his nose and his split lip, but he's still bellowing defiance at you. Scrabbling at you with his claws. Assuming you drop him, or what do you do now? I think you still have free action. I can't attack again, though, no. No. Okay. And I'll just throw him on the ground, I guess. That's possible. Right. He falls. He falls on his ass. It's now Hojo's turn. Well, how far away is Hojo? Are you still full distance away of 20 meters? Or are you closer? Nah. I'm uh, 12 meters now. Dude. He's on his ass. Football kick his head. <laughs> <laughs> Football kick his head. Uh, no. <laughs> Poor punch, guy. Punch just, the orc's head. Just, just leave him alone, man. I'll just, I'm just gonna do a full auto burst. Dude, he is sitting <laughs> on his ass, staring. Going for his chopper. Going for his chopper, dude. Just <laughs> Football kick his head, and you may. It, 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 hilarity may ensue. <laughs> nah. <laughs> this silly bastard. I'll probably miss anyway. Yeah, there you go. Oh, 77. You were trying to football kick him? Nope. Oh, I was trying to shoot him. It didn't matter either way. 
Alright. So Hojo unleashes another barrage of high caliber rounds into close combat. Yeah. Detonating. Oh, he yeah. You shoot between the orcs' legs. That was it. Still do damage. You, your shots are just going wide yeah. over his head. I gotcha. That's me, I guess. I'm I'm very close to them, I assume. Uh, hold on. Let me let me look. Yep, it is you. Wait, hold on. <laughs> you still, you've still got a free action, don't you? For um, nah, non-aggressive. That's it. Ah, no, that's it. Okay. Theros takes the, like two steps forward. I assume he's pretty close. After his, uh, he was still leaning forward, ready to go after striking down the previous orc. He takes two steps forward, lifts his blade, and drops it down as though you'd hold a knife in a stabbing motion with both hands, and drives it down in towards the um, the back of the orc's neck, aiming to go right down through his uh, his center, like uh, one would execute someone with a gladius, a Roman gladius, try and go. Right between the, uh, the the neck to go towards the lungs. So you're gonna you're gonna mercy stroke the orc through the neck. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna stab him downwards uh, to impale him downwards with um, down through his. Yeah. Chest. I rolled a sixty-eight. Ah, my weapon skill is sixty. Okay. Hatred against orcs. Oh yeah, yep. what, what do I get? Plus ten. Plus ten. Oh, that means I, it's a uh, fifty-eight. I I passed by two. There you go. Sixty weapon skill. And I'll roll damage, I guess. One d ten plus six is uh, roll the nine with six pen. Plus my strength of do is it strength doubled because of a power armor, the strength bonus. What's your pa what's your power armor's strength bonus? Do you get double strength bonus while you're using wearing power you got armor? Natural strength. Yeah, natural strength. Everyone's what? everyone's power armor should have a, a strength bonus that that it adds, that a modifier that it adds to your strength, which is incorporated into your strength bonus. Plus, then take into consideration your power armor history. So, what's that the, clears it up. the the strength bonus for power armor is, um, is? Is that not just double your strength bonus? Um. Well, like take for instance, uh, the, uh, think about. I have Mark Three power armor on my guy, and it just gives me a flat strength bonus. It doesn't give me a. It's not double anything. I don't know about your armor. I thought unnatural strength gave you something. I don't know. Okay, hold on. What are you using this strength bonus for? What is this, a swing or something? Yeah, servo augment... Oh, yes. Uh, power armor abilities. Servo augmented musculature. Plus 20 strength. Oh, there you go. Look at that shit. So, plus 2 to your strength bonus. Okay, so 4, 5, 6. So, 6 uh, strength bonus on top of 9. Plus power armor then, history. Then, what was that? Multiply your strength by two? 15, um, yeah, so 15 strength. plus 10, so 25 damage. I, I, yeah, I'll stop at that. 25 damage, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna fuck him up. I mean, up. you're not trying to drive your sword into the ground like Scalber or anything, so... Yeah, I'm just looking to impale him downwards. Alright. Trying to split the earth. It's very, it's in a very slick motion. I've cut down one orc, kicked him off my blade, swung my blade down to to flick the blood off of it, and then moved towards the other one, turning the the blade in my hand and stabbing it downward with both hands down to the back of the, the orc's neck. The orc's stream of profanity in his guttural tongue cuts off. <laughs> As your blade goes through him, his tongue lolling out of his mouth, exposing more broken teeth and blood. I pull out my blade, and uh, 
send a sort of psychic wave through it, crackling then clearing off the blood that's on it. And then with my left hand, I reach down, pushing my fingers into the orc's body to get its, uh, a, a lot of blood on my left hand. And I look to the other two. We have to move and get into cover. Ready in cover. They'll be coming right towards this location. We need to move. All right. So you're all gonna you're gonna get the hell out. I, I hope so. Well, I, 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 I'm hoping that everyone else is gonna agree with that and go with it. But that's my that's my suggestion. Should we do a concealment roll now, or just fucking booking it? I think we should move and then conceal. We need to get away from the sound. Okay. Is everyone with them? Everyone agree? They all want to roll more concealment tests? Sure. Assuming ice consent. Well, I'm assuming that we're all going to run uh, kind of off to the side, but still towards the two objectives. Uh, a run is 36 for me. But I would move with the group sticking relatively close, so I'd match the... Um, the Whoever's got the lowest run, as long as everyone does run. What does everyone say? Are you guys running? Yeah, what the I'm hell? Sure. What's your run move? It should be... Let me find this shit. It's 24. Like... Yeah, mine is the same. You're both, you're both 24 if you run. Because mm -hmm. I'm yeah. half 6, full 12, charge 18, run 36. Yeah. Okay. Even with the... Uh, even with the agility bonus from uh, Fury Like Lightning, still only 48 agility, so... How do you do... Run? Run should be twice your charge. If I'm not mistaken. And what's your charge? Because I think I have my numbers messed up. Your charge should be three times your agility bonus. Oh, then I have 30. Um. Yeah, so your charge, is, your, your charge is the same as, as mine. So your charge my, is 18. No, my charge is 15. Oh, uh, okay. Because so my agility bonus is 5. Ah, uh, see, my agility bonus is 6. Unless, wait, does this take power armor into consideration? Because if it's with power armor, then yeah, I have 18, but I wasn't thinking that was. I'm not sure, but I'd be moving the same dis the same amount of distance as Hojo was to add 24, because I would stay as a group. So I'd be moving that distance anyway. What's your agility uh, bonus? It's 50 without, or it's 5, but do I put the power armor I have on that? Yeah, that go for it. Put oh, the power okay. armor there. What would the power okay, armor add? I have, and I have the same as Saint. What would the power armor add? It adds 1 agility bonus. It's, it's 10. So yeah. What, so is, that, it, is, is that because the Corvus? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I'm, yeah, I'm the same as you Saint then. I have the 32. At 36. Oh, slowing down for me. Yeah, I'd be, I'd be. Are you gonna stay at the same speed as Hojo Ice? Or are you gonna move ahead? I will move a bit ahead, but like not too far ahead. So we're moving off to the right, um, towards at least some kind of cover. Anything that looks like it's potential light or heavy cover that we can maybe conceal ourselves around or behind. Is there any reaction from any more orcs or anything? Do we see anything coming or...? You might be rolling. I am rolling. Go. No. What? Come on! You guys roll your concealments? Uh, nope. We have not concealed yet. We just ran, so it takes full everything, I think. So it's, uh, 24 meters off to the side away from the noise, towards whatever looks like the most cover that might can help hide us. Alright. You guys are, are moving off. You're moving off the hilltop and you're running as fast as you can. 
direction that you're supposed to be going. Yeah, just a little bit off off to the right that looks like uh, towards some right. cover. Off to the side. Away from any obvious trails. Yeah. As as you beat it down the slope, after killing the uh, the orcs Massacre. on patrol, you can hear what sounds like gunfire behind you, but not necessarily aimed at you, just random gunfire. The orcs have definitely found the the dead body. Ah, they shouldn't suspect insurgents. How they do that all the time. So now you've moved into cover? Yeah. I have it. Mm -hmm. So moving into cover, uh, Thara kind of takes a knee. Uh, I assume at this point I'd be rolling a concealment roll, if that's okay. Yeah, the the guns are about like four kilometers away at this point. Like you can God clearly damn. make out the shapes from across the, the valley and everything. Like you're on one ridge top, guns are obviously on another. The plateau beyond it, where the base is located. Yeah, I might as well start concealing. Yeah, I'll roll concealment. The uh, you, you can tell that there's some kind of skirmishing going on between you and the guns, but you can't really tell what it is. I rolled a sixty-nine for concealment, but I'm not too bothered about it at this point. Um, Theros begins unfastening his helmet. Down on one knee, try to keep as in cover as possible. So the valve's letting out a lot of uh, air pressure as he unclips the last one, letting a, a big hissing noise. And he removes his helmet into his uh, right gauntlet, his force sword attached to the maglock on his side. Brother, what are you doing? Uh, glancing up, he doesn't give too much from notice. He looks back down into his effects in his helmet. Uh, the his left gauntlet, which was heavily caked in orc blood, and he lifts it up and starts to lap up some of the blood, um, looking to try and get as much information from this, uh, uh, well, from the, the whatever the orc blood is consists of. Basically, um, you know, space marines can digest biomatter to inherit some memories. Of the uh, the creature, I'm trying to get an idea about how many uh, orcs are around these A guns ahead of us. I'm hoping that these orcs came from that direction, or just to get some idea of uh, where the thick of the orcs may be from yep, uh, ingesting this uh, this this biomatter. Give them the orc vocabulary. Hmm. I'm just trying to examine memories from biomass. As helpful as that would be, I hope you get useless information. Like, real useless. Hmm. What, do you, what do you roll that against? Perception? I, um, I, I guess so. Um, I've got no idea what we'd roll it against. I just know that space marines can do it. Uh, but I, I leave it up to you. It doesn't really. I don't really mind what I'm rolling it against. I just thought it'd be an interesting way to try and get some more information about the situation. I, uh, I think this is more for fluff. Well, kind of. I mean, if we know uh, where the mass of orcs is, we can try and keep on the far side of them, so we're not going to get jumped from a flank. At least we have some way of retreating. So it's more just on how well, to take the approach. Um, just give me a d100, and I'll see how effective you are, and I'll decide from there. Okay, I rolled a forty. Um, if it helps at all, my perception is 52. Um, if you're not doing it on perception, or if you just want to do it on your own kind of gauge, that's fine. I don't mind at all. Oh, I... And, like, like, and, like, and like I said, I'm just looking for some kind of visual-based or feeling-based memory from yeah, this orc yeah. about where the, the, the majority of the, the orcs were. So, the, the, oh, oh, the biggest on one... Hold sex saint. The homophagia? You get a skill or skill group from doing that. Not so much knowledge. What do you mean? Space Marines can uh, ingest... Um... I know, but the way it's kind of 
described is that you gain the knowledge as a skill. Temporarily, but that's what it is. It's on your character sheet. Gain the knowledge as a skill? What, what's it called? Almophagia? Phagia. Blah, blah, blah. It's above your multi long and your space marine abilities. Take a moment to check out the, uh, the Blood Angels chapter section in the book, because they might have something different with that, too. Aye. It's a, a chapter-specific trait for them with that. Like, usually Space Marines have to eat brain matter. I think the uh, Blood Angels can do it with only the blood, or with just the blood. I'm pretty sure uh, any Space Marine can do it just the blood, but um, I think the, the Blood Angels would be more a bit more potent. But the the thing that uh, Hojo pointed out, um, that's looking for a, a skill a skill group or something. See, I'm not looking for anything so grand. I'm looking for just petty information, really. I'm not looking to try and gain any skills or any advantage. More just uh, a perception based on where this creature. Uh, basically, if you imagine how ants work, in a sense, um, I might, um, I'm trying to figure out where this creature felt the biggest central. Um, Con uh, condensed what energy is in, in, in relation to where he was if that makes sense so wherever he felt the biggest what energy was like you know everything that makes orcs attract to the same place uh, around the, the immediate area so I'm not looking to gain anything fancy more just information yeah, I, on the approach I get you, but that's vague as fuck holy hell It's uh, basically what I'm saying is which direction is the biggest wild energy from this orc? In the immediate surroundings. And I rolled a 40, so I may not get any kind of information out of that at all. If it's based off percept, then I just passed. But if it's not, then a 40 is not exactly amazingly good. You can tell that the boys are planning something big. Uh, that's not even any of the information I wanted. But they, uh, they're definitely getting ready to make a push on the fort like, within the next couple of hours. And that they're probably definitely not being very di diligent as far as security goes. They're all, they're all grouping up for a push. Okay. So we'll be heading the same way. Yeah. But obviously we've got the attention of some of the orcs, so... Yeah, I mean, there are orc patrols around. They know that the Tyranids are in the area. So I fastens back on his helmet. We don't have too long, cousins. They'll be moving before long. We'll want to make our move soon. We still have a little bit of ways to go. And we don't know how many orcs were on our tail. So I advise, uh, unless anyone says that, or has any other idea, that we move, keep on moving as fast as we can. Let's see. Lead on.